money or he was he was gambling to try to make money to buy this script that he thinks is fantastic that one of the guys that used to write his his shitty horror movies wrote and this is the movie that's kind of that's going to bring him the mainstream success but the money that he gambled with originally before he got the the marker in, in Vegas belonged to some other kind of low level mobsters who run a limo service and that guy is played by Delroy Lindo who is another one who's so good in the movie <laughs> and like Delroy Lindo um he worked he worked with Spike Lee a bunch mm-hmm. you know he's he's in my he's in Malcolm X he's in Crooklyn he's really good in Crooklyn He's great in Clockers, which I think was the same year as Get Shorty. Um, let's see, what else? What else was Lindo in? He's in Broken Arrow with Travolta, like the next year, and he's in Ransom with um, with Rene Russo the next year. But he, he's got a great voice, and he's he's one of these guys that uh, Harry owes the money to. Do you know who the first choice for Bo, Bo Catlett was, Del Rondo's character? Shit, uh, I think it, um, Samuel L. Jackson? Samuel L. Jackson, which would have been like a pretty great Pulp Fiction reunion like the, the following year after Pulp Fiction. But uh, Sam Jackson didn't do it, they gave it to Del Roy Lindo and... Which is which is good because Sam Jackson's so great in Jackie Brown. Mm-hmm. So I, I I like Delroy Lindo in this movie a lot, and like I said, he's Delroy Lindo's got a great voice, where he's he's like kind of where he's he's menacing, but he's also like real smooth. Yeah, when he's menacing, he's very iconic, then, uh, iconic yeah. voice, like uh, in the vein of like Keith David. Or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's got this like really good kind of deep voice, but he's he can also be you know he's he's got a couple of scary scenes in this movie, Mm -hmm. and we'll get to a a real funny scene later on where he's the one that's being intimidating or being intimidated. But um, so you meet you meet Harry talks about he owes money to these limo guys, and then you meet Bo who was played by Delroy Lindo, who's at the airport to meet uh, a guy by the name of Yayo, who is the associate of these drug guys that Cat and his associates uh, owe some money to. And they sit down in the airport. The guy the guy meets him, and he starts... It's it's Jacob Vargas who plays Yayo. He starts like kind of talking tough to him. Mm-hmm. And Bo just says, hey, why don't you just sit down and shut up? And then... He tells him, you know, this is this is what's going on, because there's there's money in a locker, but Bo sees all these DEA agents kind of sitting around eyeballing the locker, so he knows that he can't go and get the money without getting busted. So he he sits down with Yayo, and there's this super funny exchange where he says, "Hey, do you see the guy to your right?" And Yayo looks left. He says, "No, your other right." And Yayo's still looking left. And he says, hey, derecho. And then Yayo looks right, finally. And he says, hey, you see you see all these guys sitting here? Those are DEA agents. If they move their leg, you see the little bulge? That's the backup gun. So, like, look for the bulge in the pants. And he says, you know, when the coast is clear, go to this locker, get your money. You know, this is the money that we owe. And then be on your way. So he gets up and uh, he leaves and they go to they go to a meeting with with Harry. Harry's in the office. These guys invested in one of Harry's movies, which is the money that Harry blew in Las Vegas. So he, he wants help dealing with them. So he asks Chili for the help. And then Bo and, and Ronnie show up and Ronnie is the John Grice character. Who's kind of like his. I don't know if John Grice was, if if Ronnie was the the bodyguard because he was packing, but I I think that Gandolfini as Bear is is more of the bodyguard type. 
because he's he's a bigger guy. Yeah. So I don't know if if Ronnie was Bo's partner or if if Ronnie was uh, just you know some more muscle that that Bo had. But they're gonna they're gonna come into the office. So Chewie says, "Hey, I'm gonna sit here. You sit. You stand over there. I'm not gonna say a word. You don't introduce me. I'm the you know." Open up the blinds that the light is in their eyes the entire time. Keep your mouth shut. Don't mention the script that you that you want to buy that you think is so great. Just let me do all the talking. And as soon as these guys come in, Harry just completely blows it. This is my associate, Joey Palmer. He's sitting down. He starts running his mouth about all kinds of stuff. Oh no! The look on Travolta's face as a. Uh, as Harry is blowing, everything that that Chewie wanted is is pretty classic. <laughs> and then and then immediately, you know, Harry's talking to to Bo and to Ronnie about the the investment that they had in his. I think it was what Freaks yeah. was the name of the the name of the the movie, the the shitty low budget horror movie that he was making that they were involved in. And then he said. He immediately starts talking about the Mr. Lovejoy script, and they they instead want to put their money into Mr. Lovejoy because it sounds it sounds better. And Chewie had told him, "Don't mention Mr. Lovejoy." And it's just, <laughs> Harry just completely blows everything. He pulls out the script and he's like, "Yeah, I've got this like you know masterpiece <laughs> that I'm working on. It's called <laughs> Mr. Lovejoy. It's right here." Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's like he he pulls it out. To be fair, he pulls it out to kind of diffuse some tension mm-hmm. because you know uh, Chewie is talking talking to Bo, and then you know he says, "Hey, am I supposed to be talking to you, or am I supposed to be talking to him?" Pointing at Ronnie, and Bo's like, "Oh, you can talk to me." And Harry's kind of like, "Ooh," and has to diffuse that tension. So he runs and goes, grabs, goes and grabs the Mister Lovejoy script, and he's just immediately starting to talk that up. <laughs> and then after after Bo and Ronnie leave, and you know Ronnie threatens him before he leaves, says you know you need to give us our money by by Friday. And then he does the the little thing where he he shows that he's got the gun jammed in his belt. And then they they leave, and then <laughs> Joey just sits there in silence, and for for a moment, that just kind of shakes his head and says, "I can't believe what you just did. <laughs> Maybe I wasn't clear." <laughs> So he he leaves Harry and then he goes to uh he he goes to Karen's house and he's talking on the phone with uh with Tommy back in Miami and Tommy's asking him you know if you found Leo yet and all that and he says no I'm I'm tracking down something else but he's like I think I'm gonna stay out here you know I want to I want to get involved in movies and Tommy says well what do you know about making movies and so it's like I don't know I don't think the producer has to know very much. Which, like, the producer is the whole reason the movie gets made. <laughs> so he he's he's talking with Tommy, and then Karen comes home, and there's this great scene with Renee Russo where she's in her costume for the day, and is talking about how she spent all day, you know, climbing out of a grave and screaming, and. Chili com- he compliments her on a, a scene that she did in a, in another movie. And compares her or says she was better than Joan Crawford, and then and then Karen says, "Oh yeah, well you know that was a good part." The whatever the the monster movie that she was in that he was talking about. Yeah. So and she she goes upstairs to change, and you know she's talking about the script that Harry has, the Mr. Lovejoy script, and how they want Martin Weir for it, and then you find out that Martin Weir is uh, Karen's ex-husband. Martin Weir is the, the Danny DeVito role. Supposedly a really good actor. There's a good exchange between between Harry and Joey where they talk about what his best role was. Mm-hmm. And one of them was like the, the mob informant, and the other one was like the crippled gay guy that climbed Mount Whitney. <laughs> they, they have that exchange that's really funny. But Karen, Karen, and Rene Russo has I told you has a, a lot of great 
uh, reactions uh, to a lot of what's happening in the film. And that's another good one where she talks about, you know, Harry's got this dream to make this script that he can't do without the money and he can't do without, you know, the star that I'm supposed to get for him. But then uh, Joey invites her on a date, kind of, you know, says, hey, I want to go see Touch of Evil. Uh, do you want to come with me? And she uh, she declines. So he says, okay, well, I'm going to go find, I'm going to go find Leo. I'm going to go meet up with the dry cleaner, but I'll, I'll see you later. And he leaves. And then we cut back to Miami where, because Chewy hasn't delivered yet on the, the Leo, the Leo DeVoe money, Ray is going to see Leo's wife. And I think it's in the trailer. I think we pointed that out. Uh, when we were talking underneath the trailer when you were playing at the top of the show but as Ray's walking up to as Ray is walking up to um, Leo's wife he asks if she's spoken with with Chewie since her husband blew up (laughs) and that's that's a really funny line but he you know he he assaults her and then he says you know hey I, I want that money so you need to you need to make sure that he gives the money and then back in Los Angeles, Chili tracks down Leo, and you—that's uh, that guy's played by by David Paymer, who's a really good actor, and always has this kind of like nervous, nervous energy mm-hmm. about him. And if you've ever seen, if you've ever seen that Mel Gibson movie Payback, mm-hmm. he's great in Payback, where he's just kind of like that weaselly guy. And then as soon as he realizes that he's in trouble, he really starts to freak out. And that's what, and that's what he does with, uh, with Chili. And Chili takes his money and says, Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take your money. I'll give you, you know, interest, but I need this money for, for something else that I'm doing. So he, he leaves. And then Leo chases after him to say, Hey, you know, if you're gonna take that money, then the interest is supposed to be this. And, you know, Chili turns around and gives him the look, and then Leo gets scared and runs off back into the hotel room. And then Chili goes, and he's watching Touch of Evil, which is a good movie. I just watched it. I rewatched it, um, last month. Cause it was, it was on. So it, it was, it was, Really interesting watching that movie again and then watching Get Shorty a bunch in the last few weeks. Yeah. Preparing for the show and seeing everything. And of course, Chewie is enamored with it, so he's he's reciting all of the lines at the end of the film. And then, you know, turns out Karen came in, even though she came late, but she she came in and is kind of watching Chewie do his thing in the theater. So they they leave and as they're walking down the street, she says, Hey, Uh, I want to do the Mr. Lovejoy movie. I want to be a producer on it because I'm going to get Martin to do it. And because she has that, that history with, uh, with Martin. So after, after they part, Chewie goes back to Harry's office and he finds Bo in there and Bo is reading the Mr. Lovejoy script. He's talking about, Hey, this is good. You know, this, we, we could do this. And Chewie says, uh, I think this could be changed. I think this could be changed. And then Bo says, well, why don't we sit down and write it together? And Joey asks him, well, you know, do you know how to do that? And Bo says, ain't nothing to it. You know, you just write down what you want, and then you hire someone else to, to fill in all the commas and shit. He says, oh, and, you know, sometimes they don't even need the commas, because I've seen plenty of, of movies where I knew that they didn't, they didn't have any punctuation in the script. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a great exchange. <laughs> Yeah, his, his whole his whole idea of how to write a movie is completely flawed. And Chili's like, "Well, if it's that easy, then what the fuck do I need you for?" Yeah, exactly. What do I need you for? <laughs> they have a little a little funny exchange about who who would be really good in the roles. Then we cut back to the the airport because Yayo is still at the airport. Uh huh. And there's a really funny scene where he's just. He's standing looking at the locker, but then he's looking around, you know, trying to spot all the DEA agents, and he's just completely lost it because everyone has a bulge in their pants, in their pant leg. <laughs> Be careful, don't say the bulge in the pants, but the bulge in the pant leg, where the backup piece is, like the pilot has it. There's a shot of like a little kid, and he's got like the, the 
bulge in the pant leg where the, the backup goes.